Hello, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time zone you are. I welcome you to my channel. My name is Yemi Omoboyega, Pastor Yemi Omoboyega. Um, kindly subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I want to seize this opportunity to appreciate opportunity to appreciate all those who have been kind enough to subscribe to my channel. I pray for you that you will never be alone in the pursuit of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Then if you have um, remember also to like my videos. Remember also to press the notification button so that uh, anytime that uh, I post new videos, you will be able to lay your hands upon them. Then, also, please um, forward or subscribe or then share my messages. Um, the message I'm about to release this morning is a message that God gave to me in a dream. It's not a sermon. It's not even a religious uh, matter. But like I said, I think I released one video a few days back where I said, who can interpret this? Uh, dream or something like that. That message came to me through God Almighty in my dream on the, I think it was on the 11th of um, December 2021. Today, I, the time now in my area is exactly 2.02. A M two o two A M and uh, just waking up from another dream and I think I thank God that there is an avenue to put this thing down so that I will never forget and whosoever God is talking to I don't know who will be encouraged like I said it's not a sermon it's just a flat dream let me put it that way a literary work that God just dropped for me in my dream. Um, what title will I give to it now? Um, I am angry with Wale Shoyinka, Professor Wale Shoyinka. I am angry with Professor Wale Shoyinka. I don't even know what meaning this will bring about, but by the time I'm through, um, you that are listening to the message, uh, I believe you will bring out something from it. Um, let me start by saying, God Almighty, is truly the almighty God. Is truly the almighty God. God speaks with us or to us, talks to us or speaks with us in diverse ways. And um, a vision of the night called dream is one of them. It could also be a vision of the day because you could just um, sleep briefly Maybe you just are having your siesta uh, during the day. God can give you a vision of the day. You can have a dream. And uh, another one can be that God just wants to speak with you. It doesn't matter whether you're a pastor, but it works well for pastors. Those who are close to God, God relates with them one-on-one. -on -one and he gives them revelations at any point in time 
and uh, many don't um, value it. They just wish it away. But many a time, God is talking to us, telling us something vital. Like I said, it's not a sermon. It's just a message as I receive it, and I'm passing it just like that. Whatever it means to you, just interpret it your own way and see whether it bene- it's going to benefit your life. So, God can also speak with you through another person. Like I always say, uh, today, my marriage is, I mean, something that God, uh, my wife today, God gave her to me through what was happening to another person. And that person came to seek counsel from my boss in the office and then uh, it filtered through my ear and then just like that it became a message for me and let me give you the example of how it is I had a friend and a colleague in the office who wanted to who was ready for marriage and then uh, he was desperately looking for a wife material and the uh, but he was using a wrong approach which to me then i didn't understand but that's what i'm saying when god may be speaking to you through what is happening to another person so this my friend then came to my boss and um, you know kind of sought advice said madam madam i am tired of life I want to get married, but all the girls I'm talking to, they are not responding positively. Indeed, one came to my house last night, and uh, last yes, last night or yesterday evening, and uh, all I intended to do was to rape her. I mean, so that she can become pregnant and be pinned down as a wife. So my boss. A female boss, elderly female boss there. The thing I'm talking about should be around 1977, no, 1970, 70, yeah, should be around 1977. Can't remember the precise date now. So I spoke, uh, I mean, my boss responded by saying, his name is Matthew, he said, Matthew, Matthew. You are, you are adopting a wrong method entirely. And uh, this method can land you in trouble because you may end up marrying a wrong person. And then she said, if you try the grown-up, and the grown-up will not respond, then try the unborn. If you try the grown-up and the grown-up will not respond, try the unborn then ah, my friend was the one being counseled but the message had a deep impact upon me it just dropped heavily into my heart or into my subconscious such that i was i you know i knew that that message was from because even though i wasn't married I too then had been thinking, contemplating marriage, but my own approach was that I would search for a suitable material for at least five years. I apportioned five years to myself, God spared in my life that if I spent, if I spent uh, uh, about um, six years in primary school and spent five years in secondary school and spend and will spend additional uh, four to six years in tertiary institution before I become a graduate then I reasoned that um, it will be that I mean it will be appropriate for me to uh, allow for proper I mean allow ample time to search for the right material that is a compatible partner, a helper fit for me 
It's not something that I'll just say, I'm ready for marriage today and I start looking, I mean, dancing around women and then grab just one and come home. I might make a mistake. That was the wisdom that God gave to me. So I said, so I was looking for, uh, I was looking for a partner that will grow up together. That would take, I mean, that that would take some time. So, that principle or that message that was given to my friend then sunk into my heart and I said, okay, I too have been trying to woo some, I mean, one or two girls, but none of them was responding. I said, let me go and try the young ones, the younger ones that will grow with me. And I... I went to, there was a, a girl around me, a young girl, in, uh, I think it's GSS, is it GSS2 now, GSS, or SS, GSS3 or something, I don't I can't remember the class name, because at that time it was uh, um, a five years, five year program for secondary school. So that was how I went ahead and approached by God's grace, the person that became my wife. In fact, I planned seven, five years, but it was after seven years before we got married. I was happy. We grew together, molded ourselves together, knew ourselves well. Okay, that's by the way. What I'm saying is that God can speak to you through what is happening to other people. If you're attentive, the Spirit will minister to you. Then, God can speak to you through trance. You are in the middle of something, whether you are driving or you are reading or you are you are even not sleeping, you are just relaxing. God can take you, you know, on a journey into slumber. Just with you know two seconds. You can just receive a flash and God can drop a message there. Very correct message. I give you another example of it. I was okay in my office too. Interestingly, my boss was uh, pregnant, and uh, one morning we came to work. We didn't see her, but a night before, precisely 11:05, I was on my study table when suddenly I just fell into a trance. Just within seconds, I saw the woman giving birth to a baby. And uh, the following morning, everybody resumed work, and uh, this woman was not around. So people were wondering, what happened? What am I doing? And then I replied, I said to my colleagues in the office, and I said, at exactly 11.05 a.m. p.m. last night, that madam gave birth to a baby. Then we're still waiting. Eight o'clock, because we're supposed to resume at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. Then we decided to get somebody. I mean, we nominated one or two, of, about two, three of us from the office to go and check madam. In the at, at home, so when we got home, although we we were not, uh, I mean, she wasn't home, and then the news came that she gave birth last night. So we went straight to the hospital. When we got to the hospital, uh, I turned my back, you know, you know off the woman, no, sorry, I turned my face off the way I backed the woman, and uh, I then asked my madam, I said, madam, what time did you give birth to this baby last night? She said, 11.05 p.m. Then I said, that was what God showed to me in a trance last night, and my colleagues said, wow, you must be a prophet. 
you must be a prophet. Then I said, well, that was what God showed me. We left it like that. So God can be speaking to you through such a media. Circumstances can be speaking to you. God can be speaking to you through circumstances. You know, if a visionary farmer knows that when it begins to rain, early enough, that's why good farmers, even by now, in my area, would have planted their yams for next year. In the first place, they won't eat up their seeds. In the second place, their yams will come out early enough because that, those yams would have been resting in their uh, heaps until the rains come and they will sprout. So, God can speak to you through whatever is happening around you. It could be like the rainfall. It could be sunshine. So, just like you know, it, it is easy for you now to, you know, sun dry your grains or anything, even your clothes during dry season. The moment the sunshine comes, you know that God is telling you, you can go out without an umbrella. You can go to your work and come back without the fear of rains drenching you. And then you can do so many things. And uh, you can put your grains in the sun to dry and go far away and come back to make it dry, not wet. So God speak to us in such ways. Now, the last message I received, dream, in a dream, was the one I said, who can solve this riddle? If you check my YouTube channel, please, you will see there, who can uh, solve this uh, riddle for me So Now, let me talk about the latest one. Like I said, I just woke up by 2 a.m. and I started doing this recording by 2.02 a.m. In my dream, I saw myself staying, you know, sharing, okay, an office with Professor Wale Shoyinka, our literary icon, the Nobel laureate that Nigeria has produced. May God elongate his life. He has accomplished, and may he finish well in the mighty name of Jesus. So, in that dream, he was sitting on his own table. I was sitting on my own table. And um, I just found myself reading newspapers. Newspapers. Very early in the morning, as the newspapers arrived, I will gather them and I start reading them, reading them, reading them. So, as I was reading them, I was building up my information bank, my understanding of life. And uh, it got to a point, of course, we all know that Professor Wale Shoyinka is, is, is a literary icon, as such as, um, as, as well as a social reformer. So I now asked, no, I had this feeling in me that I am a gifted literary icon, but someone that lacks encouragement in that dream. That was the way I was feeling in that dream because I read a lot and every other every information in this world is on my fingertip because I read widely, I read anything in that dream. So I even read some articles about um, and now some calls themselves something like Tossman or something. So there was the title was there why is there some of these things, some names. Why did they end with man, man, not woman? That was just I don't know what how that came about. I was asking myself in the dream. So and um 
at a point. In fact, there is this definition I gave to information in that dream. Because I love reading a lot and I love writing. So, and I said, information is life. Life itself is information, whatever that means. Because without information in life, you hardly can succeed. And there is no end to gathering information. One of the best ways to gather information is to read widely, you know, do a lot of uh, reading or studying. And uh, you have to read indiscriminately. So it got to a point during that dream. I, Professor Olesonyeka, looked at me intently and he asked me a question. I mean, intently like someone who wants to fill that gap. That is, I said, I am a gifted writer, a literary icon, but I lacked encouragement. So, intently did Professor Ole Shinka look at, look at me and you now ask me a question. Are you a symbiotic? I don't understand what symbiotic is. So what is it? Mean? Though I've heard the word before, but I did guess inside that from that statement that symbiotic might not mean a literary icon. And I said, remember my word. He looked at me intently as if if I got that answer right, he was ready to encourage me. So, and I didn't even understand very well what that symbiotic or something, in quote, meant. So, but I guess it wasn't, it did not mean literary icon. So, immediately he asked me that question. I said, no. He said then, why are you so, you know, interested in, re in reading? He said, every newspaper that has come, you, you, you read everything between 8, I read between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. every morning in that dream. That was my reading pattern. Immediately we got to office, I would spend two hours first, you know, reading through the newspapers. He said, why are you so interested? I said, I I mean, that was when I told, did tell them, I said, I read so widely so that I can gather information because information is life and life is information. There's nothing you want to do in this world that if you engage yourself in research work all the time, that is even reading the newspapers, today's world, you go through your internet, Google things and read articles, you know, articles are everywhere on any subject or you listen to YouTube you get whatever you want there and you are built for instance anyway I'm going to talk about that shortly there was a time I was uh, reading um, okay let me leave that alone for now now so uh, we exchanged that but his intention was to really kind of bring me up in the literary side, then I told him I'm not, I'm not a, um, can I call it now, professional um, literary person, but I am a lawyer by profession. I say you're a lawyer and you are, you get yourself so busy with this. Then I said, yes, because I, I was a born literary person. So the discussion went like that. But what I noticed was that because I did say I was not a professional writer, so his uh, interest in lifting me up uh, literally became waned somehow, waned, you know, and I say, uh, or the enthusiasm wasn't there. 
that way because he believed that it is professionals uh, that, I mean, literary professionals that can't easily grasp that. But I told him, sorry, sir, I am. And even in that dream, I was trying to tell him what, um, uh, how people were able to manage uh, their environment such that they contribute positively to that society. Then I cited him, Professor Shoyinka, and Fela Nikola Pukuti as great examples of social reformers who, because they were gifted in that field, Fela Shoyinka is a literary icon, um, Fela is one of the greatest musicians that Africa, Africa ever produced. And then the two of them, in spite of their distinct professions, contributed to this to Nigerians, the Nigeria's development in terms of social reforms, you know, being social critics or social activists. And as a result, they were able to build their society for the better, such that they became a recording, I mean, a reckoning uh, or a reference point as far as social activism, activism was concerned. So I now said, well, he said, yes, I told him, he said, yes, that's true. He said that even, even as a professional writer and critics that he would have gone beyond where he was if he had taken up what mattered most in terms of, you know, he said, even for instance, now that he had no um, telephone now, he was supposed to never to lack telephone, he was supposed to have some material wealth and so on, he said. But because he did not take up certain matters, that if he had taken up certain matters, that even what the society did to him, if he had taken them to court and go to um, social media or something like that to propagate, uh, you know, that he probably would have won such cases. And the proceeds from such cases would have meant money for him through with which he could buy such gadgets and that he would not have been, in terms of financial uh, prowess, he would not have been this poor. <sighs> then I said, what came to my spirit then was that, you know, that many people are poor because they, they do not, you know, take advantage of the opportunities they have to be rich. Because if, if like he said, if you had acted on that identified issue, that you have in your heart, if you had acted upon it like him, you know, he knew that he had a right, but he didn't claim it. He was just looking on. And that would have meant that if he had acted, his uh, problems, financial problem, wealth problem would have been solved. So because he didn't, he was limited far below where he could get to, whatever that means to you. That's why I said, you know, it's not, I'm not sermonizing, but I'm just releasing the dream as it is. But I know it will minister to somebody. And that person may take certain steps. So we were doing that exchange. And uh, one thing that I realized was that, look, um, everybody needs someone to mentor him or her or encourage him or her to progress in life. But that, however, there are some people who want to help one, but who are biased because of your background. So, because of their background, and um, whatever that means, if that person who is supposed to help you or to mentor you is unwilling to, you can encourage yourself 
Let me give that example. As a writer, you know, I had had that vision to be one of the best writers in this world. But <laughs> so many things were working against me then. Uh, even my education then was far below someone who can, you know, put pen on paper to start writing something meaningful that could be treasured by the society. Then I was like, oh, then, yet, I wanted to be a writer, but the only thing I could do then was to make sure I read widely whatever I could lay my hands upon. You know, books, newspapers, everything, literature, here and there. And that went a long way to help me. Then one day I was reading one book written by one lady writer. Um, I can't remember her name. I wrote it in my autobiography, the, lady, the name of the lady. So this writer now was saying, expressing the situation I was in, that I wanted to be a writer. <laughs> I lacked the uh, necessary skill, professional skill, to be able to put pen on paper and begin to produce books. Then I now read that article, and the lady said, if you want to write books, and you think you cannot write it, you are deceiving yourself, even at the level you are. I said, what? Then he said, what do you want to write about? If you don't know what to write about, start writing about yourself. Write your own autobiography. And I told her that I would lack expression because my language, understanding of, English, of the English language was like so small or so little that I, I couldn't really sum up that courage to start writing. I was afraid of grammatical jargons and all that. Then she replied that it doesn't matter what you write about. People are interested in reading anything, including autobiographies. And that if you now think you lack words, she said, I mean, do you think? I said, yes. Then in my heart, as I was reading that book, I said, if you think, if thoughts flow through your mind, just put them down word for word. The way those thoughts flow, they are expressed in the language that you need. Just put down your paper and write them that way. And that was what, that was how I began my literary um, um, exploits. I started writing my autobiography. I remember that was on the uh, 10th day or so of um, October, first day of October, 1981. First day of October, 1981. Right here, I started writing my own autobiography then. And I did not, because of the difficulties I had and so on, I did not publish that book until 1991. That was exactly 10 years where I went through, you know, uh, handwriting from there to manual typewriter writing from there to uh, electric typewriter writing from there to God helping me somewhere along the line. Computers came. I was just keeping these manuscripts, you know, producing until I was able to store them. And then, then I was also looking for who we published them for me. I, I tried. I wrote to some publishing houses. I was living in Lagos then, but I visited Elisha, uh, Elisha Ford Press, Elisha Press then in Elisha. I visited that place for more than four times after subscribing, sub submitting my um, manuscript to them, but it wouldn't get published. Ah, then I said, oh, this book must be out. Ah, what will I do? Then I said, okay. One day, I decided to self-publish the book on the computer that I was using. So what did I do? I just um, designed the cover, the cover myself, you know, and gave it to a printer to print 100 copies for me. And then I printed out the book, it was well laid out in a book form in the, on that computer. And I, I was able to afford to pay for the something then. It was a 90-page document. 
and I published it after printing it. I now kind of collected it, folded it because I did a double column just like the book, and then printed it and folded it inside that cover. Stapled it. Oh, my dear listener, the book was ready. I was able to publish 90 copies. It was a joyful thing for me that if somebody will not mentor me or help me to publish it, I could do it myself. And I gave that, not those 90 copies, I reserved one copy or so, or two, then I, gave, I began to give those copies out to people as, I mean, as a free gift. Interestingly, the feedback I had was so encouraging. Look at, my talent would have died if I didn't encourage myself. If there's anything you must take away from this message is that you need to encourage yourself if no one will encourage you. So, immediately I published that one. Another idea came. I started publishing other books. By um, August 20, 2006, I had written and published, funded them myself, fund, you know, funded the publishing myself. This time around, it's not just, um, it's not just um, printing them on the computer and binding. No, this time around, I got a, a printer who could do professional work. I published, self-published five books, which I launched by special by the special grace of God at the uh, Muzon Center in Lagos in August 2006. And from there, what happened? The books attracted so much positive feedback. You know, let me say one thing. That very first set that I published, 90 copies, the one copy I gave out, God used it to bless me. Because I gave one of them to, I was seeking admission to last student. I gave one of them to one of the lecturers who happened to be close to me and was interested in my, my, my matter. The man later became the vice president. Uh, vice, yes, maybe he wants to become the vice president of the nation. He wants, um, later, he, he became the vice uh, chancellor of Lagos State University. And his name is uh, Professor Larry Fagbo. You know, we were friends, you know, and it was a disappointment that brought me to brought him to me. I had a reference in one of my subjects. Every disappointment is a blessing. And he assisted me greatly. He taught me thoroughly till I passed that paper very well. So this time around I was looking for admission into the LLB program. That was a diploma in law. Then I was having some difficulties. So one day I met with him. Those of you who are running away from your people, you may end up losing your opportunities. So one day as I came to follow up my application in that um, school, I saw, I met him on the way. One man said, greet him. The other man said, don't. Then I obeyed the one that said greet. And I greeted him and we exchanged uh, greetings. And he, he said, he said, what do you want to, what did you want in this place? Oh, and I said, ah, it's you that invited us for uh, inter, I mean, for admission into the LLB. I said, I consider it done. And that was it. Can you imagine? God did it. He helped me. Even though one is qualified, I also know what the society is. Even though one is, was qualified, but there were obstacles. But God used him to remove that obstacle. And today, by the special grace of God, I am medical, I'm a lawyer, professional lawyer by God's grace. So one thing led to other. You can see disappointment can lead you to blessings. Then the disappointment I had by having reference in a subject brought me close to me. After that one, uh, opportunities came. We were able to help one another one way or the other. Amen. So like I said, it's not a sermon. Learn from all these things that we have seen. I am angry with Professor Wale Shoyinka. Professor Wale Shoyinka is just a symbol. You need to understand. It's just a symbol. 
if you are, if you continue to to uh, be angry with the people that you think should help you and you don't help yourself, you will lose out. Encourage yourself where nobody will encourage you. Mentor yourself where nobody will mentor you. So how I self-published that book. Today, I mean, I've lost count of the number of books I've published. And now, look, everything we are discussing here now is a book. If I put it down in written for Botango for Modern Technology, YouTube is now a place where I can produce my books. This is a dream that I dreamt today. I just woke up at 2 o'clock and I am up and I produce another book for you now. As you listen to this message, I hope it profits you. It's not a sermon, I've told you, but there are so many lessons to learn. That's how God speaks to somebody. I hope he has spoken with you. God bless you. And please share this extensively with your contacts if it has blessed you. Have a very wonderful day. Well, even though it's not a sermon, we can end up with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this message you dropped in my spirit today. I don't know whom it will bless, but I know you are blessing somebody and there shall be positive feedback. Somebody's life will be lifted. Please let that happen to my listeners. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a very wonderful day. Remember, share, share, share. Subscribe to my channel. Please do subscribe. I pray for you as you subscribe. God himself will subscribe to your lives. People will subscribe to your lives. The people from east, west, north, and south, all around you will help you. Environment will help you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.